Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is going to be a very quick tutorial, a very quick tip on how you can uh, override the default execute method in your struts2 application. Now, if you look here, we have uh, we've all the while we've seen action names mapped to action classes, and I've told you how the execute is the default method that gets executed whenever there is an action execution. So in the tutorial action. I have this public string execute that gets executed whenever this URL, the URL that I've mapped over here is accessed. And I've told you that that's the default behavior. And I remember I've told you that there is a way in which you can override that as well. Uh, that's what I'm going to be looking at in this tutorial. It's going to be a very quick one, but this will be very handy in a particular uh, few scenarios that we're going to talk about in a little while. So. The way in which you can override the default method is, uh, well, of course, if you do not enter anything, if you just say an action name is this and class is this, it is by default going to go and execute this method, the execute method. But now let's say I want some other method to run. Okay, so I'll have a public string. It still has to be a string over here. Okay, I'll have some other method that I want executed whenever this call happens. Okay, so I do not want the execute to get executed. I want a different method to get executed. So I'm going to return success anyway. This is just for illustration, but uh, I will do a sysout. Okay, and I'm printing a different message. So in the execute method, I actually commented out some of the old stuff that I've uh, added in the previous tutorial. So right now it just does a sysout of execute method called, and then there is a different method that does a sysout of a different message, All right? So I'll save this. And the way I can make this method get called by default is by adding a method attribute over here. If I just do a control space, you can see there is a method attribute. So I add that. And what I do here is I enter the name of the method. All right. Now what's going to happen is this is the method that will get called whenever the access happens and then it calls this method. So whenever I do a get tutorial, let me hide this thing. So whenever I do a get tutorial, this is the method that's going to get called. Without this method tag, it would be the execute by default. But then if you add this method tag, whatever method you add over here is going to get called. So let's save this. And uh, I'm going to restart because it's an XML change. Okay, let me close this and now I have the same get tutorial dot action if I hit enter you see here some other method executed so that's a different method that gets executed so this is the way to do it so you just change just add this method tag and then the method attribute and then whatever method you enter is going to take care okay now why is this useful why would you want to override the default execute method. Well, the reason why you'd want to override it is without this, right? Without the ability to change the method that gets executed, you would have one action executing just one particular unit of work. So let's say you have in your application a few set of functionalities around tutorial. Okay, so you have uh, the fetch that we've already implemented. Let's say you have a concept of, uh, say, favorite tutorials. The user could add favorite tutorials. It could edit, delete, uh, you know, their favorite set of tutorials. Uh, typically a CRUD operation. Now, what you would have to do is you would have to have a fetch tutorial action 
an add tutorial action, a delete tutorial action. So essentially, you would have to create a separate tutor, you know, action class for each and every unit of operation, which is really a pain. So that's where it's really handy to be able to have different methods for each of those operations in a common action class and then map those different methods in different action mappings. Now, let me uh, let me give you an example. So here I have a get tutorial map to let me do with this back. Um, I will call this get tutorial. Okay, and I will rename this method as let me remove this guy here. I will rename this as get tutorial. And this is the method that this mapping is going to call get tutorial. It's going to look at tutorial action and it's going to call the get tutorial method. But then what you could also do is have a copy of this mapping. Say I have a add tutorial and this is going to again map to tutorial action, but to a different method. I'm going to implement a add tutorial. All right. So this method is called when the URL has add tutorial and this get tutorial method is called when the URL has get tutorial. So what I would do is I would add the add tutorial method to the same action. I don't have to create a new action for a different operation. So I'll just say add and the method would be a tutorial method called and I would call this get tutorial method call. So essentially I have two different methods in the same action class that are mapped to two different actions but with this method attribute. All right, so it's the same action that caters to two different URLs and two different methods to the actual work. Of course, I will have to restart the server. Yeah, okay, so close this. And now if I do a get tutorial call, the get tutorial method is called. And if I do a add tutorial, then the add tutorial method is called. And finally, there's one other tip I'll leave you with. If you look at this, this uh, action mapping, these two action mappings, there's one thing that you should immediately think of. If you look at the, the action name, the methods, you see here the action name is same as the method here. So the thing that you should immediately think of is wildcards. Is it possible to implement wildcards? And uh, yes, just like you can implement wildcards in the class name and the action and the result name, you can have wildcards in the method value as well. So we can actually simplify this much more by just adding a wildcard here. So I will, instead of giving the name over here, I will have a wildcard star mapping to method one. So whatever is the action, the corresponding method will run. So I can actually do away with this, this configuration. If I save this and uh, restart the server. Now it's going to have the same result. Now add tutorial action is going to call the add tutorial method and the get tutorial action is going to call the get tutorial method. Of course, if you, if you call something that is not actually there, you will obviously get an error. No such method because it's trying to actually call the edit tutorial method of the action when we don't have that method yet. But, uh, well, that's a problem you'll have anyway if you access an action 
that you haven't really mapped anything to, you will obviously get an error. And of course, there are better ways to handle the error. Right now, I just show the stack trace here. You might probably have a, an error page that says, hey, this URL doesn't exist. But uh, I hope you can see the obvious advantage of having the methods differ based on the action that you're trying to do. So you have a common, in this case, you have a common tutorial action that does all things tutorial related. And then you have uh, CRUD operations that have a particular method and a particular URL that's, that's mapped to it. So I can implement all the, you know, the get tutorial, the add tutorial, the edit tutorial, delete tutorial, and all that will auto map to the corresponding URL names. So I don't really have to add each and every URL mapping over here. It's automatically done and uh, you can have all those URLs automatically call the right methods and get executed. So I hope this concept is helpful and uh, I hope you try to implement this kind of a mapping for your CRUD operation so that you have a more readable and a more organized starts XML.